Hello, everybody, and welcome to the new Cananiah Report. I'm Eli Wilson, Jr. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, our topic for the day is personhood. But before we dive into our topic, I want to play some music for you. Today, my guest is a friend, a colleague, and one of the world's greatest pianists, Ms. Gail Jones Murphy. Let me tell you just a little bit about Gail. Gail is a composer and an educator. She has composed more than 800 compositions. Many of you may have heard her, co her popular composition, Dwell in the House. Her piano and vocal performances have been enjoyed by thousands throughout the United States and many countries around the world. Her most recent responsibilities include serving the Mount Sinai Seventh-day Adventist Church as Minister of Music and Music Director at Conway United Methodist Church, both in Orlando. She is also a board member and piano instructor for the Steinway Society of Central Florida. Her new project, entitled Worship While I Wait, is a collection of her original compositions along with some hymn arrangements. I'm going to play first her instrumental version of the title song. Then I'm going to play her arrangement of Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And then we will end with her vocal solo of the title song, Worship While I Wait. Here's Gail Jones Murphy at the piano playing the instrumental version of the title song.
Are you who you really are? Do you pretend to be someone else? How often? Does who you are change from situation to situation? When is it acceptable to pretend to be someone you're not? But this is a central question of personhood. Is there anything more important than being whoever you actually are? Chuck Klosterman. Chapter one of my book, Harp Hunters, is entitled Personhood. And I wanted to start there because I think that understanding who we are as people, you know, through self-examination and uh, self-awareness is an essential, uh, essential quality for effective leadership. You know, Blackaby and King in their book, Experiencing God, writes this. If God has a great assignment for you, he has to develop a great character to match the assignment. Now, Harp Hunters is based on the life and ministry of David, trying to glean from David's character some attributes that will be helpful uh, to us as ministers of music today. It's interesting, do you know that we know more about the life of David than any other character in Scripture? He's mentioned 600 times in the Old Testament and 60 times in the New Testament. Now, David is not portrayed um, as an example of perfection. He's also not presented as someone he's not or more than he appears to be. Eugene Peterson says that David represents what he calls earthy spirituality, a man full of flaws while at the same time filled with God's spirit. But despite of all, David, all of David's flaws, there was no pretense in him before God. God calls him a man after my own heart. Now David appears on the scene as somewhat of a nobody, a runt, little shepherd boy. You know, Jesse, his dad, didn't even feel that it was worth, that he was worth bringing before the prophet Samuel when God sent Samuel to Jesse's house to anoint uh, the next king. You know, the prophet said, are these all your sons? And Jesse said, well, you know, there's a youngest, you know, he's out there tending his sheep. And Samuel said, bring him to me. So David was anointed king. But while David was the king, Saul was still on the throne. You know, David could have said to Saul, Hey buddy, your time's up. You're sitting in my seat. But he didn't. Because for David, there was no separation between serving and leading. See, serving for David was not demeaning. Because he felt like serving is an essential quality for leadership. You know, if you can't follow, um, I doubt that you're going to make a very uh, effective leader. So serving under the supervision of Saul was no problem for David. Because David knew who he was, in spite of what it might have looked like. are you? We cannot separate who we are from what we do. You know, our world tolerates and even encourages facades. It seems that image rather than genuineness has become the norm. You know, image is the projection of something that is not real. Yet, image is central to our perceived value. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say you're at a gathering with a group of people, most of whom you don't know, and you strike up a conversation. One of the first questions asked is, what do you do? And you know the answer to that question uh, will determine your social and economic value in the eyes of, of the person who asked the question. 
you know, our occupations, uh, it's tied. Our occupations are tied to uh, our perceived value. That's why some people try to embellish what they do to impress somebody. So instead of saying, I'm a janitor or I'm a custodian, we might say something like, uh, I'm a maintenance engineer. You know, E.E. E. Cummings, the American poet and novelist, writes this. To be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you everybody else means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight and never stop fighting. Cummings also wrote this. We are not what we are. We are not even what others think we are. We are what we think others think we are.
Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. What does it mean to conform? Conform is to assume an outward expression that does not come from within. In other words, it is masquerading as someone that is not true of who we are. Transformation, on the other hand, is an outward expression that comes from within. Charles Swindoll, in his book, Living Above the Level of Mediocrity, writes, Most of us would do anything to keep from being different. We'd much rather blend into the woodwork. One of our greatest fears is being ostracized, rejected by the group. Ridicule is a pain too great for most of us to bear. You know, image is so strong until some of us are afraid to be ourselves. We are afraid to be who we are. And you know, when you buy into that self-defeating mentality, the best that you can be is a watered-down version of somebody else. Now, I know it can be difficult being an original in a world of copies. Why would I want to hear somebody who sounds like Stevie Wonder when I can just listen to Stevie Wonder? The world does not need an imitation, Stevie Wonder. Listen. What God has placed in you, he has placed in you alone. And no darkness can extinguish your light. You're the only one who can do that. I once heard a quote. Uh, I don't remember where. In fact, I don't even remember whose quote it is. But I want to share it with you. And it says this, until you make your life your own, you're walking around in borrowed clothes. Now, we all have insecurities, but until we are willing to examine uh, what those insecurities are, you know, we run the risk of missing God's assignment for us. I mean, we cannot be effective leaders In fact, we cannot even live an effective life pretending to be someone we are not. You know, uh, Eugene Peterson in his book, Leap Over a Wall, writes this. Work can reveal something essential about us, express our values, articulate our morals, act out our convictions of what it means to be a human being created in the image of God. Conversely, Work can conceal our real identity. It can be used as a front to advertise something that we want people to see in us or believe about us, but that, in fact, we've never bothered to become within ourselves. You know, no matter how hard we might try to hide who we really are from our people, eventually they will see through the illusion. Now, I want to share with you one last quote. It's from a book entitled The Disciplined Leader by John Manning. Um, You may or may not have heard this, but uh, if you have, it's worth hearing again. And it says this. It has been said that there are several levels of knowledge. Knowing something for certain is the first. The second is thinking you know something. The third is knowing for certain you do not know something. The fourth is not knowing that you don't know something. This last statement of knowledge is the most dangerous. What do you not know about yourself that perhaps others know all too well? Who we are, our strengths, our weaknesses, our values, our integrity, They are all essential to not just being strong and effective leaders. It's essential for living a life that honors God.
middle of my pain I won't worry or complain God I will worship you while I wait while I wait Lord I While I Wait, a beautiful song. Thank you so much, Gail. We appreciate you sharing your ministry with us. Now, you can see on your screen, if you want to purchase a copy, you can see the websites right there on your screen that you can go to to purchase a copy of uh, Gail's CD. Once again, thank you for staying with me uh, for this session. And until next time, be blessed.